In this lecture, I want to talk about percentiles on the normal distribution, and I want to show you just how to use your TI calculator for this. Now, in both, in both cases, I'm going to show you how to use the um, TI-84 and then the TI-83 here. Okay, so the way you're going to do this on your calculator is you're going to be looking for this inverse norm um, option in your calculator. So just like in the last lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to hit second function distribution, second function distribution, and it's option number three, inverse norm. So what happened with um, the normal CDF is we input some values and it gave us the area. With the inverse norm, what we're going to do is we're going to input the area and it's going to spit out a value. Okay, um, so this will this will make more sense when you after you see the first example. But the values you're going to be inputting is you're going to input the area you're interested in, the mean of the distribution, and then the standard deviation of the distribution. Okay, this is the this is the values you're going to input in the TI-83. It's a little bit a little bit different than the TI-84, but I'll but I'll walk you through it. Okay, so here's the first one. And I'll explain what percentiles are um, as we go through this. So the combined verbal plus quantitative reasoning score on the GRE, which is the graduate record exam, this is the exam you take if you want to go and go to graduate school, is normally distributed with a mean. So I'm telling you the mean is 1,049 and the standard deviation is 189. So the GRE is kind of just like the SATs just for graduate school. Okay, what is the score of a student whose percentile is at the 85th percentile rank is at the 85th percentile? So when you're in the 85th percentile, what that means is 85% of people are below you, okay? So if it's normally distributed, what that means is that 85% of the area on the normal distribution is below you, okay? So here's how we're gonna do this. So the 85th percentile is equal to, we're gonna use this inverse norm. Okay, you can do it like inverse norm function. And so the way it's gonna work is, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put the area. Well, I want the area to the left of me, okay, to be below me to be 85% or 0.85. The mean is 1049 and the standard deviation is 189. All right, so let me show you on the TI-84. You're gonna hit second function distribution. You're gonna to go to inverse norm. So the area you're gonna put zero point, oops, sorry, 0 0.85. The mean was 1049 and the standard deviation was 189. You'll notice on the TID3 it says tail center right. So I'm just gonna leave it as left here. So I'm gonna hit enter, enter and go down to paste. And as I hit enter, you're gonna see this. Now on the TI-83, it's just slightly different. You're gonna go second function distribution down to inverse norm. You're gonna type 0 0.85, comma the mean 1049, comma the standard deviation 189. And here the default is always to the left, so you can just close the parentheses and look, I'm going to round it to two decimal places. It's 1244.89, 1244.89. Piece of cake. So now let's talk about a student who scores the 40th percentile. Well, that's inverse norm. You want to find 40% of students scored below them. The mean and standard deviation, and I'm just going to do this on the TI-84, second function distribution, inverse norm. I want 0 0.4, I want to find the 40th percentile. The mean, standard deviation, leave it as left, go down to paste, and this would be the 40th percentile, 1,001.12. So that should be just super straightforward with your calculator right there. All right, now let me give you a trickier problem, okay? So notice I have a drawing here. 
All right, so it's known that the length of a certain steel rod is normally distributed with a mean of 100 centimeters and a standard deviation of 0 0.5 centimeters. So right off the bat, we know it's normally distributed. We're given a mean, and then we're given a standard deviation, okay? Suppose the manufacturer wants to accept 90% of all rods manufactured, okay? Determine the length of rods that make up the middle 90% of all steel rods. Okay, so you want the middle 90%. Alright, so this is the this is like the crazy important part here, the middle 90%. Okay, what that means is you need a top cutoff value and a bottom cutoff value. All right, well, if you want the middle 90%, that means 5% is above and 5% is below, okay? Well, another way of interpreting 5% is above is 95% is below, okay? So if 5% is above, 95% is below. So this top is really the 95th percentile. So you want the inverse norm, you wanna find the 95th percentile, the mean and the standard deviation. So I'll do this one in the TI-83 now here. So second function dist, inverse norm. You want the 95th percentile, the mean, and then the standard deviation. And the top cutoff value here would be any rods um, greater than a length or, or the length of 100.74. Now let's find that bottom value. All right, well, in the bottom value is pretty straightforward. You want 5% of rods below you. Okay, so that's the fifth percentile. So I'll do this in the TI-84 now. So second function dist, inverse norm. So I want the fifth percentile. The mean is 100, standard deviation is 0 0.45. Just gonna go down to paste. And it's 99.26 when I round it. Okay, so for what lengths, okay, will the rods be manufactured? So the middle 90% of rods have a length between 99.26 centimeters and 100.74 centimeters. All right, class, uh, I hope at least it makes sense for how to find uh, using the inverse norm to find percentiles.